As we enter version 5, players will get to experience the new Netlin Archon quest, and you'll get to obtain a free copy of Kachina just by playing the quest. A lot of people have been discussing her kit, and she's easily been labeled as one of the best buffing units in the game. But does her kit actually live up to the hype? In this video, I'll be discussing Kachina's kit and some of the aspects I find good or bad. I'll also discuss her role in various teams and what she opens up as a niche. As always, remember this is a kit analysis from a game design view, not a guide or meta video. Disclaimers, timestamps, social media links, and music credits are all down below. With that said and done, let's get started. Before I talk about my thoughts on her kit, let's quickly cover what she does in combat. Her skill will cause her to enter the Night Soul Blessing state, and summon her Turbo Twirly. She'll get a bar on the left of her character, which is the Night Soul point count. When the bar empties, her state ends and the drill disappears. She has two different effects depending on whether you press or hold her skill. Pressing it will just summon Turbo Twirly to her side, and it'll start dealing intermittent AoE Geo damage that scales on Kachina's defense. When it's in this state, Kachina can leave the field and the drill will remain. It's also considered a Geo Construct, so it can interact with other abilities that use its mechanic, such as Zhongli's Pillar Resonance or Chiori's Doll Summoning. Each time the drill does its attack, the Night Soul Bar loses a chunk of points. If Kachina decides to hold her skill, she will climb into the drill and be able to ride it around. She can move around very quickly, and when you use your normal attack, she'll repeatedly slam the ground, which allows her to deal faster hits of her geo damage, but it'll also rapidly deplete the bar. Using her skill while the drill is active allows Kachina to swap between mounting or dismounting the drill, so you could change up your playstyle midway through its duration. Next, she has an A4 passive that increases her skill's damage based on 20% of her defense. Her damage is already purely defense scaling, so this is just a nice bonus to her kit. For her burst, Kachina slams the ground once, dealing defense scaling geo damage. She also creates a field. While in the field, her drill's AoE range is a lot larger, allowing it to hit enemies from further away. It also grants Kachina a movement speed bonus while she's riding it, so if you have to move to different enemies around the field, you can do so much faster. It also summons the drill to Kachina's side if you already have it on field, which is a nice quality of life mechanic. Finally, we can look at her A1 passive. I know I covered the A4 out of order, but that was because it was tied to her skill, and this is a standalone passive. When a party member triggers Night Soul Burst, Kachina gains a 20% Geo damage bonus for 12 seconds. For anyone a little confused, Night Soul Burst is just a mechanic that triggers when you have Natlin characters in your party. When characters deal elemental damage, the burst is triggered. It can trigger certain effects, and the more Natlin characters you have in your party, the shorter the cooldown between Night Soul Bursts. One of the neat things about her kit is that you can choose her playstyle. You can mount her drill and front load all your damage at once, or you can leave her drill by itself and have it deal damage over time. This not only spreads out her damage, but also her crystallized procs. You might be wondering why everyone keeps calling her a buffer. After all, everything in her kit is focused on damage. Sure, her C4 allows you to give your team a defense bonus, but that's dependent on how many enemies are present in your burst, and it's not like that bonus is enough to warrant a necessary pick. When you look at her kit in a vacuum, there isn't anything special she brings to the table. She's just an off-field damage dealer like Albedo or Chiori. Her real value comes from the Cinder City Artifact set. With this set and its Night Soul related effect, she can provide her team up to 40% elemental damage bonus when she triggers Crystallize. To better explain this, the elements buffed correspond to the elements involved in the reaction. So if for example she triggers a Pyro Crystallize while in Night Soul Blessing, that will grant the entire party a 40% pyro and geo damage bonus. She's looking to be a very solid pick, especially in geo teams, but I did want to open up the discussion on her somewhat reliance on this set. And when I say reliant, I don't want to mean that she's completely useless without her set. She's a damage dealer, and damage will always find some value in your teams. But when the spotlight is on her artifact set and not her actual utility, it starts to put things into perspective on how little she actually provides for her team. If this artifact set didn't exist, she loses a massive chunk of her utility. Without it, she's just a free-to-play Geo off-field damage dealer. I don't know about you, but I don't think it's a good thing if a character's value comes from a piece of gear. Reminds me of that one Spider-Man scene. No, no, please, please, please. Let's just, have you it. don't understand. Please, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it, okay? So, why is this the case? The main reason? She's free. If we look at the other free units we got at the beginning of a major patch, namely Kale and Lynette, you might notice a pattern. Damage-oriented kits, high support potential, kind of underwhelming, but flexible enough to work in a multitude of teams. 
Kachina checks off all of the boxes. This is a pattern that has been present for a few years now. So while I'm not necessarily happy about Kachina's kit, I'm also not that surprised. Alright, I've talked a lot about my negative views. Let's shift gears and discuss the positive things. While I think it is bad her value is heavily dependent on the artifact set, I don't want to diminish the fact that her in conjunction with the set is going to bring a lot to the table. Geo usually gets a lot of flack for being the worst element, but in this case, Kachina being Geo played a vital role in her currently high value. Because when combined with the artifact set, she opens up neat options for crystallized comps. Before, there wasn't someone who's specifically there to buff the team's involving crystallized reactions. Imagine units like Navio or Ningguang. They're units who perform a lot better in crystallized comps, but they didn't have a Geo unit who provides that buffing potential. Most of their buffs had to come from the other elemental units like Bennett or Farina. But Kachina can now cover that role. What I like about this is that it doesn't overstep the roles that other Geo units have. She's an alternative option for your teams, and this can be based on performance or just simply preference. Let's look at different scenarios for a Navia team in double Geo. Albedo and Chiori cover personal damage and faster crystallized procs. If you're looking to stack Navia's shards a bit faster, and you find more value from their personal damage, then you run one of the two. If you're looking to have more defensive utility against strong enemies, you run Zhongli. His pillar can still crystallize, but due to the smaller range, you're likely going to have less consistent generation. Kachina now covers the third fast set, which is buffing. Let's say I have a second DPS, such as Xiangling. Kachina creating a Pyro Crystallize buffs both Navia and Xiangling's damage, with Ben providing additional buffs on top of that. You sacrifice some damage and defensive utility for the sake of buffing, but the point remains that there's now a new option to work with for these teams. It also helps that Kachina's buffing doesn't overlap with other Geo buffers out there. Goro is a unit who excels in triple or mono Geo comps, while Yunjin's someone you want for normal attack buffing. Moving on, I do want to explore Kachina's value in a triple Geo comp. I say triple, not mono, because with this team, you have to run a fourth member to help proc crystallize. If you had to pick between Goro and Kachina, obviously Goro's the better option. At C6, he provides multiple defense bonuses, a Geo damage bonus, and Geo crit damage. Kachina's only sources of buffing include her artifact set, and then her C4, which buffs defense. But it simply doesn't compare to Goro's other buffs. Of course, it's not a bad option to run her in Triple Geo. She's going to be a free unit while Goro is still a gacha pull. If you don't have Goro or you don't have him built, then Kachina will still be a fine option in your Triple Geo comps. And on top of that, there's the option to just run Kachina and Goro together. The main idea is to run a Geo Hyper Carry, and then a second unit to apply elements for Crystallize. Then you run Kachina and Goro to buff the Hyper Carry. A team that I think will be very good is a team consisting of Noel, Farina, Goro, and Kachina. You have Farina to buff your team's damage and deal some personal damage as well. Goro buffs himself, Noel, and Kachina with his defense and Geo buffs. Kachina is going to use Farina's Hydra to trigger Crystallize, which buffs not only every Geo unit but Farina herself. And finally, Noel is going to benefit from all the damage buffs, and her team healing will allow you to generate more fanfare for Farina's buff. In short, everyone helps everyone. Finally, she doesn't even need to be in any sort of Geo focused team. She can work as a general support. Granted, the main DPSs have crystallizing synergies. A lot of teams like to use Zhongli, but if you don't have him, or you're using him for a different team, Kachina can be an alternative option. You're just sacrificing a shielding in place of damage buffing. She could also sub in for someone like Kazuha. His support utility is still better, but once again, Kachina's a budget option that can fulfill a similar buffing role. So, in summary for my video, my issues are mainly focused on her game design and her lack of independent value. She's very reliant on an artifact set to give her that value, but that doesn't mean she's going to be a horrible unit. She'll still be a good option for many team comms, and with her being free, you also have someone available in case you don't have more premium options lined up. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. Let me know in the comments, are you pulling for Kachina's constellations or just keeping her at C0 for now? What kind of teams do you want to try her out in? And finally, any additional thoughts you might have. Thanks again for watching everyone, and I will see you all next time. Bye!